welcome back to my channel. I hope you have subscribed to the channel and press the bell icon to stay updated. Moving on to question number three, we were working on this worksheet previously. We left at question number three. So starting with question number three, binding energies then as the energy required by the nucleus to separate the nucleons to infinity. That's this is the nucleus. Energy required to separate the proton and neutron into separate nucleus, uh, nucleus, sorry, nucleons is the binding energy. Uh, let's show the variation with nuclear number of the binding energy per nucleon E of the nucleus. So we have to draw uh, this graph is given in the question. I would refer to that graph as well. You must have done that. The maximum energy, maximum binding energy of the iron and then their binding energy decreases. So we're going to draw this graph. In the next process in uh, one type of the process, deuterium undergoes this reaction. Deuterium, two nucleus fuse into one nuclei. That is a fusion reaction. So name the process we're going to write here as it uh, is as a fusion reaction. And explain in reference to line in A2, why this reaction results in the release of energy because if you have studied the chapter you must have studied that the binding energy of individual nucleon that is on the left side would be greater than the binding energy of this one so extra energy is always released because these two individual when added together their binding energy would be greater than the binding energy of the helium so in order to compensate for this extra energy, energy is released. So we'll justify here with this point that energy must be released because individually they have, uh, helium has low uh, energy. The nucleus always have less energy as compared to the individual particles that we have studied in the quantum physics and the uh, 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 decay equation as well. Now we have to find out the energy per nucleon. We have given everything referring to the equation above. I'm, I'm going to write that here that two deuterium, it's two, sorry, excuse my writing and sound as well. Let me know if there is any issue regarding writing and sound and try to work on it. So we have the energies, we'll just simply add them together. We have two deuterium, so 2 into 2.014 equals to energy of helium, which is 3.016. And uh, we have one neutron, so that would be one point double zero eight double six five so eventually basically we have to add this and subtract it from this so our final answer would be zero point zero zero three five one u u is a unified system System of units unified and one unified is of 1.67 right? for minus 47 kilogram. So if we have to go from unified to kilogram, we'll simply multiply it with this vector. So the mass defect is mass defect is the difference of mass of individual nucleon subtracted from the mass of the nucleus. Normal words. Here the mass effect is 0 0.035. 0.0035 U energy equation is E. So as discussed, the mass is 0.035 U. Mass defect is 0.00351 U. <clears throat> also, he asked us to find out the energy. So E is equals to mass defect into C square, putting this value here in this part. 0 0.00351 uh, instead of u we'll put the value of u which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms times c square which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 
minutes here. This will give us the value of energy, binding energy, which is 5.24, uh, sorry, 5.24 into 10 to the power minus 13 joules. In the question here, I asked to find out the total energy for one mole of deuterium. If you focus on this equation, we could clearly see that two moles is giving one mole of helium. So if we use one mole, that will give us 0 0.50 mole of uh, uh, helium. So keeping that in view, and we know that if number of moles are given, number of moles are multiplied with Avogadro's number in order to find out the uh, mass of the particle. So if the number of mole is given, which is 0 0.5, so in order to find the total energy 0 0.500 times Avogadro's number, that will give us the mass of the molecule of against one mole of deuterium into the energy which we have bounding, binding energy that we have found in the previous part, which is 5.24 into 10 to the power minus 13 joules. Putting this in the calculator, we'll get the total energy as 1.58 into 10 to the power 11 joules. I hope you get this part. Let me know if there's still any issue regarding this. Moving on to the next question. We have question. We have uh, state one piece of experimental evidence for the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. So that would be photoelectric effect. The wave nature is the diffraction of electron. We have to find out the uh, wavelength of light. So we know that we have the formula lambda is equals to h over p. In the very first question, we have did this formula and we know that p is equals to m into v. If it's alpha particles, so mass, we know what the mass would be 4m, 4 into m, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27. Velocity is 6.2. So putting this in this, 4 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27 times velocity, which is 6.2 into 10 to the power 7, will give us the momentum as 4.1 into 10 to the power minus 19 Newton seconds. The unit is not uh, important here because they have already given us here. Uh, this already into base units, so no worry to do. So, and where h is constant, so lambda is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34 over this value, momentum 4.1 into 10 to the power minus 19. So lambda will come out to be 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters. The speed of the particle for particle in B1 is gradually reduced into, is gradually reduced to zero. On sugar 8 points get the variation with v of lambda this equation again come to v and lambda has inverse relationship and so we're going to have a decreasing graph from here then we have suggest an explanation for why people are not observed to diffract when they walk through a doorway always remember always remember everything has a dual nature we we can also act as a wave <laughs> That's that's that seems funny and, and listening to it, but yeah, if we could approach, approach the speed of light, we can act as a wave as well. Everything in order to get whether that is going to act as a, a particle or as a wave, just use this formula. Put your mass and velocity into this, and we will see that the wavelength would be so large that it could not be observed in any way. Similarly, if you put the formula and we'll put the value of electron, its mass, and its approximate speed. Suppose, 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 suppose 2.8 to the power uh, 8, supposedly you'll get a shorter wavelength. That would be in the range of ultraviolet or somehow. So the wave nature is influenced by your mass and velocity. If, if we have a lesser mass and lesser velocity, our particle nature would be dominant. Otherwise, the wave nature. So I hope this would answer this part C that explanation because our speed is not incomparable with the speed of light. So, and also our wavelength is very negligible as compared to the width of the doorway and frequency uh, diffraction is only prominent if this wavelength is comparable this with this gap. So none of that is present. So 
the wave nature is absent here we cannot discuss it state what is meant by radioactive decay radioactive decay is defined as the spontaneous emission of ionizing radiations or the emission from an unstable nuclei so writing it down let's use some art color to our visuals so spontaneous emission of radiation or spontaneous emission of radiation from an unstable nuclear. If you need a further detail on this topic, do you want to work on radioactive decay and the equation? I would love to make a lecture on it. So just comment down below. And I'll, I'll try to make one as soon as possible. So the next question is on figure 10.1 sketch. The variation T of the number N of the nuclear X present in the sample year line should extend from T equals to 0 to T is equals to 3. T, do we have the, the sample activity is A activity. I hope activity you guys remember. Lambda N. This is equals to decay constant into n this is the activity previously so if we have to draw the graph we know that the half-life graph is made as at time t equals to zero it would be one at time t equals to t it would reduce to half of its value after 2t it would reduce to 0.25 and 0.125 would come somewhere to this block so we'll join these points i'm very bad in drawing so just get the idea so that would how the graph would look like Moving on to the next part, we have uh, activity versus N. We have to draw a graph for that. I have just written the equation before that activity is equals to lambda N, decay constant. So activity So keeping that in view, we have to draw activity versus n graph. We could see from this equation, if this is the constant, a is proportional to n. So we'll get a straight line graph from here. Oh, sorry. It would go like this. t equals to 0, 0. Proportional, proportional. So these two points. Let me make it. Try, I'll, I'll try to make it even neater and nicer. Let me use a line for that. No, I don't have the option. Oh, I have the option line here. So it would pass from here till here. Let me circle the points with the darker blue. As it's proportional. So we'll get this type of graph. Say the name of the quantity represented by the gradient of your line A over N. A is proportional to lambda N. A over N. A is along Y. Sorry, N. X is along N. So that would give us the decay constant. Uh, figure 10.1, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And then 10.1, they have ever asked us to refer to 10.1. So let me take you. And 10.1 is the activity. Sorry. Activity is given as radioactive decay per unit time. So N over T is activity. So we'll write activity here. For figure 10.2, it would be a decay constant. Now we have, they have asked us to find out, we have the formula N equals to N naught E lambda, this vector from here, N over N naught would come out to be 
E minus lambda T T is a half life. Let's see what the question they have asked us to do in this question. Mm, let's read this question. They have asked us to for the sample in B calculate the friction N at T equals to 1.70. We have to find the decay constant. Do we have the decay constant? Okay, let's find the decay constant first. Uh, from one of the equation we know that uh, decay constant is given as log two over T is equal to this factor. And T they have given as 1.70 T. So getting back to the equation E minus lambda into T. T is this, lambda is this. Putting this in the equation, we would have minus, we'll ignore the minus sign for a bit, log 2 over T into 1.70 T. T cancel out. Putting this in the calculator, uh we'll get the value as n over n naught is equals to one zero point three one if you are not familiarized with this equation i'll upload the lecture in a while uh, you'll get the idea from there as well moving on to next part of this question we have uh, okay that's it we'll continue the next part in the later video